everybody, Gabby here. So if you listened to last week's episode, our first episode ever, hopefully you did, it was really fun. It was just the two of us, Becky and I. Um, you will know that each week we start the episode with our heart takes. So heart takes are things that you need to know to be successful in dating and relationships. Um, some tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. Um, and once we uh, get that heart take out for the week, we'll do- dive into a deeper topic and sometimes an interview with a special guest, which we have today. So um, I have a heart take today. Um, This past weekend, I was at one of my best friend's bachelorette parties, and it was a small group. There were only four of us, and we're all about the same age. Two of the women who were there are both engaged, and then two of the women there are single, including myself. So it was a really interesting dynamic of, like, talking about our dating lives, talking about what it's like when you're like on that verge of getting married to your person. Um, so we had some like really interesting dynamic conversations. And there are t- actually, I cut this like a twofold heart take. <laughs> the first thing um, I would say is even if you're single and you are wanting to find your person and you strive to be married and start your family, celebrate your friends. I think it's like one of the most joyous experiences that you can have is like, seeing a friend find their quote unquote soulmate um, and start planning a life together in the future. And I think that when that person is really truly happy in a healthy relationship, there's nothing more you can do than like put your heart and soul into celebrating that person. I think that like that comes around and I think like it will help you meet that person. Like when you have that joy in your heart for other people, Uh, because we were talking about how like this one woman I was with, how at one point in her single life, she was feeling kind of bitter about, like she was very open about feeling bitter about like when her friends would get engaged or um, when her friends would get married. And she's talked about like that personal growth, how she's gotten to the point where she can finally be happy for somebody, even if she's single. Um, Another thing, my other heart take, um, that's kind of wrapped into uh, the same weekend of of this philosophical love we were talking about, we tend to think so far into the future about is this person on a first date, is this person someone I could be compatible with for the rest of my life? Is this somebody that I can see myself with in 10 years? But a piece of advice that was given to me this weekend is why don't you just after the date think, do I want to go on another date with that person? Did I really enjoy myself enough to go on that next date and just kind of taking it date by date? And I know that's something like I've worked through with my dating coach a lot is like, on a date, on a first date, someone will say, like the other person will say something that will just like get me caught up and I will start overthinking like, this isn't, this is not going to work long term. Uh, something so minuscule and, and not like a, a difference in values, but just like something that could live without for the first couple of times getting to know somebody. So I think that's a really good strategy is after a date, do I really want to see that person again? And kind of just taking it day by day and, and dating in the present. I like was just about to ask you, are you becoming a dating coach next, Gabby? Yeah. Is that next up the line? Yeah. Because you're, that's like perfect. And that's something I talk about a lot is the only real goal of a first date is to get to a second date. And if you don't, it's not a failure. You've weeded someone out and you're one more person closer to your person. But a goal of a first date is not to assess someone for marriage and babies. Like the goal of a first date is just to get to know that person and have a good time. So I love that. And I just wanted to put an exclamation point on your first heart take. Like, I love this second episode and we're already giving like Two first to our listeners. No, I just it was so good. I was so inspired this week I had to come and talk but about. So true. I mean, I think celebrating and putting um when you're jealous and put out an energy of like you want so much of what someone else has, and we all do it. We're humans, but I think it's really important to try to talk your brain out of that and to really be grateful for what you do have and what your friends have, because that puts that grateful vibration and that abundance mindset out into the universe. And that's when you attract those things. But I certainly can identify with the person you're talking about because I've, I've had those bitter moments also. And, and I love weddings, like, but it's hard sometimes if you're going to like six weddings in the summer and you don't have a date, like I I've been there and I know what that's like, but I love that advice, Gabby. Such a great heart take. Yeah, and I'm excited to jump into this episode. 
Me too. So yes, this is now our episode two officially and our first episode with a guest. So our loose plan, which we will try to stick to, is that every other episode will be Gabby and I deep diving into something, you know, fun and big just for the two of us. But we also want to bring you some experts, and we have an expert today to do an interview with our good friend, Atena Crane. She is, I'm going to pull her up onto the screen now because I'm super fancy. Look at that. Atena, hello! For those of you listening, we also have a YouTube channel, so that is uh, my reference to pulling Atena up on the screen. And Atena is the founder of Styled by Atena. So she is um, another lady member of our fun Palette Cafe community that Gabby and I've talked about on previous episodes. So that's how we met Atena. And she has somewhat recently, and I'll let you tell it a little more in depth, Atena started a business in styling. And while she primarily right now works with women, we've been doing some work with her on helping some men get a uh, potentially styled up and ready for dates too. So Atena is here to talk to us and you all about personal style and looking good for those first dates that you guys are going on and, and hopefully second dates too. So welcome Atena to the Micropolitan Matchmakers. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited about this. And this is your first podcast ever. Ever, yes. So, <laughs> you know, I might get a little nervous. Forgive me, but <laughs> we're just here for the girls today. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. <laughs> so, Atena, I know um, Gabby has a ton of questions that um, she prepared for us to ask you, but I think importantly, first, we just want to know a little bit about you and your business. So, tell us about Atena and about Styled by Atena. Okay, awesome. So, I started Styled by Atena um, officially about the end of last year. Um, I started it because I, I, had another, I have another business doing tax and bookkeeping, which is still going on, but um, I just kind of found myself in a place after being in the accounting world for about nine years now. I just found myself in a place where I was like, well, I can run a business. I love doing this. I love making connections with people, but I am not really feeling fulfilled too much with what I'm doing. And my whole life, I've loved fashion. I've loved style. And it's been something that's been really kind of brought to my attention from an early age because I've moved across the world. I was born in Iran. I moved to Ukraine. I moved to the United States and with different cultures there's different styles, people dress differently. And at first, all I wanted to do was blend in. And then eventually I learned how to use style to my advantage, to stand up professionally. And just because I wanted to look good, it wasn't like I didn't want to just blend in anymore. I was like, I want to be my own person. So it's been kind of a lifetime journey for me. And coming to this point now, um, and oh, like in college too, I wrote a lot of my papers about styling. I found them like a couple of months ago and I was so surprised because I had completely forgot, but I was looking through them and I was like, oh my God, this has always been a love inside me. I just hadn't really found it and kind of put it together until recently. And yeah, like my papers were about like how colors make you feel, how getting dressed will make you uh, be able to do better during interviews, all that kind of stuff. And so I was like, this is already in me. I just kind of want to bring it out now and help other people walk and, and yeah, and just, I love doing it. <laughs> I feel like we need a separate episode all about like your different time spent in all of these other places. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk style. That's what we promised, but you'll have to come back yeah. right here. Maybe you can tell us about dating in some other cultures too. That would be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. I can tell you a lot about that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You heard it here first, guys. Atena will be back. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, obviously, um, style when dating is important because you want to look good and you want to feel good um, when you're, whether you're just like meeting somebody at a bar or um, it is your first date. So it's, it's obvious that people want to be styled in a nice way that represents themselves but I feel like and I'm sure you've seen um, a lot of people get stuck on that and they hit a lot of blocks when it comes to like finding what their personal style is um, and also mm -hmm. um, dating appropriate or styling appropriately for a date um, so I just mm -hmm. kind of wanted to 
like, you know, share that narrative because even though it feels obvious is like, that's why we're partnering with Atena is because we know that styling and confidence that styling can bring, um, obviously greatly impacts your dating life. So, um, ev actually every, fr every other Friday, starting this Friday, Atena is going to be taking over our Instagram on Friday afternoons for fashion Friday. And it provides a really great platform for people, all people to ask Atena their fashion questions, their styling questions, and Atena will um, definitely answer those. So just FYI, as, as we keep talking, like think about questions you might want to ask and we have the expert available to answer. I love it. Questions. Yeah. Well, and Gabby, you really touched on it. And Atena, I know that a lot of the work you do one-on-one -on -one with your clients is about personal style and helping people identify what that looks like. So what are some ways that you work with people to help them figure out what their personal style is? Yeah, so when we, um, so especially when I do a wardrobe makeover for somebody where it's like they really want to figure out what that is, um, I go through, um, when we first get started, I have a two hour appointment just getting to know them. Like this is just me asking them questions, getting to know them, going through their clothes, looking at what they already have, talking about what they love, what they don't love. Um, and then from there, we do some styling exercises. So it starts with them taking some selfies for me so I can see what they're wearing day to day. And then I have some prompts that go along with that where they can tell me about how they felt that day. And if there's something that they love, something that they notice, what comes up. And then from there, there's a lot of journaling involved in this whole process. So there's more journaling after that. And then we go ahead and work on a mood board. So I put together a mood board for them based on everything that they have told me. And then this is how I visually communicate with them, trying to make sure that we're going in a direction that they want to go. And uh, even with the mood board, we do another whole hour of just going through everything, talking about it, like almost every piece, what they love, what stands out to them. And so it's really a collaborative process through that whole thing. And then at the end of it is when I go shopping. So I don't even look at anything until I have figured them out and I know where to go shop for them what they want, what they need. And when I go shopping, then I put together outfits for them, more than enough outfits. I bring them plenty of options, take it all to their home, and um, and they try on as much as they want to. They don't ever have to try on everything, but if they do, that's fine. One time I had an appointment that lasted about uh, about like seven hours because I she wanted to try everything on but I was more than happy to do it because that would I be just wanted to, <laughs> yeah I just wanted to make her happy so um so yeah we we went through and um and yeah and they just at the end of it they keep whatever they want and there's no like obligation of um, keeping anything that they don't love. Um, and even if it's like a white button up that they need, I'll probably bring them about like two or three options. So it's, it's really like I'm bringing them their own little mini store. <laughs> but when you create the mood board, I'm just so curious, like what, um, what are the things that you're thinking about when you're doing that? Is it like fabrics or colors or like, how do you, what's your process for that? So actually, I'm thinking about my client's life. So I'm thinking about, okay, so is this like, let's say a badass business owner, she's killing it out there, she's meeting with clients, and she wants to look professional, but also chic and like stand out, maybe, um, maybe she wants vibrant colors. So I'm really thinking about all the things that they have told me. And I go through that. Now, some of it does involve like um, like colors, but I'm not too stuck on colors when I'm doing the mood board, maybe because I want to put a bunch in there and then they'll tell me like, I like this color, I don't like that color. Or, or if they tell me ahead of time, they like to stay in the neutrals, then maybe I'll make the mood board in the neutrals. But, but yeah, but it's, it's, um, 
it's really me thinking about their life, kind of like imagining them, like if they're about to go on this first date and they're going to end up being with this person forever. Like that's the kind of stuff that gives me butterflies. And so I, that's what I think about. <laughs> that is so awesome. I love that. I want to, we should, Becky and I should do like record a little, like maybe you can come to our homes and kind of go through a wardrobe and talk to us about these things and make a mood board and we can like document the whole process and for the fans who are curious about like fun. The fans, I like yeah. it. <laughs> well, what are some of like the biggest and maybe like the most simple fashion mistakes that you're finding people are making? Like in so, their own like in their closets and like the way that they are portraying their own style. I think the biggest thing, especially for women, is putting themselves in a box, just dressing the way that they think they should rather than the way that they want to. Like I've had people tell me, well, I'm a um, like a suburban housewife and this is how I should dress. I was like, who made these rules for you? <laughs> like who told you that a suburban housewife is supposed to wear like yoga pants all day long and that is the only thing that they can wear. <laughs> so like I, mean, that I is wear yoga pants all day long. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, well no, I mean if that's what you want, that's fine. But like but it was clearly not what she wanted. And and she was saying that this is what I'm supposed to wear. And I was like, no, you don't have to wear that. Or a lot of people try to dress not as expressively or as loudly as they want to because they're making themselves smaller to make other people comfortable. Yeah. And so those are the biggest mistakes really because it's not even about like whatever, like colors that you're supposed to wear like color theory although there are colors that will make you look better and not so much but but it's it's about really listening to yourself and mm. like really dressing yourself the way that you want to there's no there's no real rules when it comes to styling and fashion i mean there's you want to be appropriate yes you and and of course like you want to pay attention to what season you're in but like, um, other than stuff like that, there's no real rules. Even even if I tell you like what's going to make you look most proportional for your body type, I mean, if you have broad shoulders and you love your broad shoulders because they make you look powerful, then hey, let's emphasize them. You know, you don't have to wear things that are going to make them look smaller. But it's really again it's about like that person's preference which is why i spend so much time in my process getting to know the person because the biggest mistake i think that people make is that they have all these rules in their head and putting themselves in that box yeah i feel like that's, the personal style piece is so important and that's like you can gain a lot of confidence from dressing in a way that you feel good and you feel like you look good and also that you're comfortable. So as you're thinking through that, like, you know, dressing someone for a special occasion, like perhaps a first date um, for a man or a woman, what would be your best piece of advice in terms of what to pick for, um, we'll say date night, not just special occasion, for a date night? For a date night? Again, I would say it's, it's think about what you feel the best in now like like for like let's say someone um like again in that example of saying like oh i don't want to do too much well if you're that person that likes to dress up you like to dress formally let's say you know you want to wear a dress to a date you don't want to wear a t-shirt and jeans then you want to attract the same type of person the someone that's going to appreciate that someone that's going to going to love that because maybe someone if you dress in a way that is not authentic to you then you're going to attract somebody that is not really in in um the same kind of i want to say vibration as you you know so like it's it's really really like think about what you love to wear again like it's um now there are things we can discuss like oh i don't want to like um like some people like to dress more sexy for a first day and some people don't so then yeah like it, depending on your preference i can make um some sort of selection like saying this is better because of what you want 
or do this. But really, I really think it's it's really just making sure that you're being authentic, not dressing in a way that you don't you don't feel comfortable. Or if you're just someone that like let's say loves cats and dogs, like it would be cool to wear something with like a little cat and dog print on it. And now you have something to talk about, you know? So so it, like, yeah, find something that you love, maybe even something that has a story behind it. So now you can really tell that person about yourself. I love that advice, like a statement, something to give yourself, like if you're someone who's nervous about what to talk about on your first date, like wear a bright color or a, like, I, I was about to say crazy print, but it doesn't have to be crazy or like a print that's meaningful. I think that's such awesome advice. I love that. Yeah, I love that too. That's really fun. I'm going to challenge myself to do something like that on one of my next dates. Instagram or it didn't happen, Gabby. We want to see it. Oh, that's right. Instagram or it didn't yes. happen. Yeah. <laughs> I need to hear how the date goes. So you have to call me. <laughs> so, Atana, what, um, so like speaking of um, first dates, what are some like we're coming into fall. Winter will unfortunately be here soon. What are some like fall and winter staples? that people should have for their closet, um, especially thinking about dating. And also too, like, are there any local shops that you would recommend people check out to find their fall and winter staples? Yeah, so for fall and winter, some of the things that I always look for and um, wanna make sure that people have in their closet are definitely um, like at least a black, uh, ankle boot and or a brown one uh, because those are the colors that will go with almost everything so depending on your closet so um, and then also some of the other pieces um, like right now I, I really love gold jewelry and right now this coming fall even though like I don't love following trends too much. I do pay attention to them a little bit because sometimes you just want to have fun with the new trends and everything. And right now, um, a lot of chunky necklaces are coming back into style. So if you have those like chain necklaces that are a little bit chunkier, that's a perfect piece because that goes with almost everything, like a gold chunky chain. I just bought one. Um, oh yeah, yeah? awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, those I are really good. In case you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then also a V-neck sweater is going to be most flattering on most people. V-necks are just universally uh, flattering. So I would say getting that in a neutral color, then it can go with jeans, it can go with a skirt, it can go with a lot of different things. Um, and then another thing that or that is a really good piece that I love that also is a little bit different for some people is having a pleated skirt or like an A-line skirt because you can style that a thousand different ways with especially boots and like let's say a graphic t-shirt or your v-neck sweater or something like that like it, it will look a little bit different um, and it and it's again another piece that is pretty much universally flattering on everybody. Now you I can play that. with the length, but yeah, so that's like, that's my thing because um, I like I primarily work with women right now and I think it's always fun to bring a little fun skirt into the wardrobe. <laughs> well, in a tenant, it's so funny and that's super helpful for our lady listeners. I think when we told um, some of our like members only group that you were coming and what questions were, there were a lot of people either asking from the male perspective or women who said, please tell men how to dress. Yeah. I know that your main client base is women, but I think men want to know, and they are listening. What is sexy on a guy for a date? What do you find sexy for, for a man when you see him? Like what, what part of a man's style really stands out to you? That's something that they might be able to incorporate into their wardrobe. Yeah, I mean, with men, I would say the same thing again, it's wear something that you love and you feel confident in because confidence is the sexiest thing. So that's what that's what you need to pay the most attention to. But another 
another point make sure your clothes fit properly because <laughs> that <laughs> that can throw off the whole look like if something doesn't fit well it's wrinkled too and that kind of like you make sure that it's put together well it's making you look good um and i love i love 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 uh, like when my husband wears some really cool sneakers, that's that's what I love. Cool. But now it can be different for everybody. But I would say like yeah. really cool sneakers. Shoes are, are the key. one of the first <laughs> things I look at when I'm out and I like see an attractive man. The first thing I look at is his shoes. Because one, if they are just completely inappropriate for the outfit he's wearing, I'm like, <laughs> does it have any style? Also, too, like, I really love when a man has, like, a real, like, invests in a really nice pair of shoes or sneakers, and it kind of just flows with their outfit. Um, and I've heard other women say that, too. I think, like, in the past, um, it, like, having nice shoes or, like, dress shoes have been, like, a symbol of status. So I think, like, women tend to be attracted to men who, like, invest in their shoes or they take care of their shoes, and it, and it looks really nice with their whole outfit. That's funny. Shoes are not something I always notice, but I feel like I will now that we're having this conversation. I love a guy that can rock and it doesn't even matter necessarily what kind of jacket, but like this time of year, like a guy in like a nice leather jacket or even like a blazer over a sweater look. Like I just find like a, a guy who can rock a jacket with some oh, confidence can be kind of sexy. Yeah, that, that's a good one too. I like that. <laughs> um, Atena. Would you, I mean, I know you're married, so hypothetically, would you date a man that had what you consider a bad or mediocre style? And the reason I ask is because there have been men that I've been interested in in the past who had horrible style. And my mom was like, don't worry, you can change that. You can help me with that. <laughs> what is your opinion on So my first advice if i may is don't ever go into dating anybody thinking you can change them yes. <laughs> <I agree. laughs> you need to accept <laughs> yeah either you accept them the way they are or move on to another person um so but but uh, i have actually a funny story about that i have a friend who is also a stylist and she went on a date she was just so excited she got all dressed up she was wearing she looked good like she looked real good. <laughs> she <laughs> went on the date. She came back upset. She was so upset. She said, I walked home. I stopped at McDonald's to eat on my way home. And I was like, what happened? What happened? He showed up in a hoodie. <laughs> I wondering if you were going to say this because I've had this conversation with more than one woman lately about men wearing hoodies on dates. Yes. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, again, it's it's it, that was important to her because that's who she is she's a stylist so she that the person that's going to be in her on her vibration the person that's going to be meant for her is probably going to care about the way that he looks um but like i mean there might be another person that might be like i actually would love a guy that wears a hoodie because i like to be more casual and i don't want him to think like i need to be dressed up every single day so, yeah, sorry, I forgot what was the question and why I started talking. Oh, you're, you're hitting on it. This is <laughs> this is about like men or, or women who you feel have bad style or mediocre style. And oh, right, right, right. Is it yeah, deal breaker? So I, right. So I think for some people, it is a deal breaker. And a lot of people want, like in her case, she was like, I put so much effort into the way that I looked and I showed up, but I felt like he didn't show up for me. So definitely put some effort into the way you look, but don't try too hard, if I may quote that, um, because like, I stay authentic to who you are. And it's okay if someone doesn't like it because the next person might, and that's gonna be the person for you. Totally, and I think that's an opportunity to be really free with your compliments, which you should be doing when you like someone anyway. And when you tell the person you're dating, whether it's a man or a woman, um, regardless of the relationship, but, oh, wow, you look really good in that, or I love that color on you, or wow, those jeans are really sexy. I mean, there's plenty of ways that if they're paying attention that you can give them those messages of, um, you know, instead of trying to outright just change their style, I think some positive okay. enforcement can go a long way. 
yeah and they're gonna love it like the other person is always going to love it to hear that and that's going to be reassurance for them oh okay so this piece does work for me let me go find more of that <laughs> you know <laughs> everybody everybody wants reassurance <laughs> Well, I love that. And as we wrap up, um, final question, Gabby, what is on your mind? Um, well, my, one of the question I was dying to ask you is like, what are the, what's the first thing that you notice about a man? Uh, if you find them attractive, like what they're wearing. Um, but I think my final, my last final question now, because I think we've kind of built up to that is how have you seen your clients transform after like investing time and energy into working with you into figuring out, you know, their, the style that works best for them. Like what, I guess, like what's a success story or, um, you know, how have you seen people like drastically change from working with you? I think um, the biggest piece that I've seen change is that confidence. It's that like before, I, like we go through this whole journey together and and they do have to work do some work <laughs> um like it doesn't just I mean I can style you and just put some pretty clothes on you but like is that what you is that what you want or do you want to go through this and really take a look and uh and see where you are and also maybe learn how to dress yourself in the future um, and, and the biggest piece is that confidence because they feel they, they actually take the time to look at it. They take the time to journal. They take the time to sit down with me and, and they really have a better understanding of themselves and what they love. And, and that's really the biggest, the biggest thing that I've seen. Sounds like a metaphor for dating. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> kind of like finding your person. <laughs> yeah. Cause it, it's really like, it's not the type, it was the type of work that I do. It's really about getting to know yourself. It's, 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 um, and, and that's what you kind of have to do to figure out what type of person you like. It's really working on yourself and really taking, taking that time again. And, um, and yeah, just looking inward and learning to be authentic. <laughs> Atena, thank you so much for being our very first guest ever on Micropolitan Matchmakers. You. We're so excited and we're already locking you in for another episode. We want to hear more about okay. dating and culture. So you'll be back pretty soon. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> and guys, if you um, are listening. Our, yeah. So every other. Um, we will have a 10 Instagram for Fashion Friday. So definitely engage with us on Instagram. Get your questions answered, all different types of questions. Um, men, women, maybe we can start testing the pool with what kind of questions men have specifically. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And if you are new to the podcast, make sure you like, rate, review, all of those fun things. You can follow us on Instagram at micropolitan underscore matchmakers. Uh, we've got a website, micropolitanmatchmakers.com, and stay tuned. We'll be here every Thursday bringing you more heart takes, great interviews, and fun topics on dating so you can find your big love in your small city. Bye, everyone. Thank you.